Hey, Joe here. I just wanted to jump on this and make a video real quick. <clears throat> kind of just squash some stuff that I've been seeing. So, um, first and foremost, I feel super awkward that I even have to make this video, but I have been like not really keeping track of all of the stuff that's going on with this investigation for those girls that are, that were killed. And, um, to start off, um, like the very next day when they had announced the murders and, um, and when they had shown the photos, as soon as I saw the photos, I messaged the two people that were in that video that I was talking to, um, uh, my neighbor and then another guy that we had met earlier that night who I thought was really cool. Um, and we invited him to come with us to grub bus. Um, and I was like, Hey, weren't two of these girls at the grub bus with us last night? And they couldn't remember, but, um, they were also very drunk and I was not. So, um, I did have, there's a drink called a Larry Craig. That's like a really popular drink over here. I did have one of those at, um, corner club, but I mean, other than that, I was, uh, I was totally sober when, if they confirmed that those were the girls. Um, the only reason I knew that it was those girls was because I saw the video that said, Oh, they were seen at this thing. Cause I actually called the police right away and was like, Hey, I just have, I think I might have information. Um, I just need to know like, what was one of the girls wearing? Cause I remember one of them had like pink because the one that bumped up, bumped into me at corner club was wearing pink. But nobody called me back from the police, and I was like, okay, they're probably just swamped with information, probably whatever. But then when the video came out, and people were like, no, those were the girls. And those two people were like, dude, those were the girls. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to physically go to the police station and talk to the police. I told the police everything I saw, um, which is different than what I think is going out there right now. And I'm... You know, I was just waiting for food. I'm just like everybody else in town that waits for food at the grub bus. It does take a while. Um, everybody goes there. And so that was kind of the thing. It was like, no, we got to, if you're ending the night, you ended at grub bus. But other than that, I don't really have any like crazy information. I don't know why everybody's reaching out to me. I don't know why so many people are trying to spin things around. And so what I've decided to do is that I'm only commenting on things that are like, ridiculous so try and give clarity but man people are really turning this into something it's not hey i'm um, sorry i had to do this in two parts because there's a lot um and i'm also shivering it's cold and i'm in my truck um yeah so i wanted to address a few things specifically one being the news article that came out it was the first person that i actually like talked to with the news media, a lot of, a lot of media outlets have reached out, um, to me and I've just ignored them. Cause I just was like, man, I'm like, I just was waiting for food. Like I have nothing to add. I've given all the helpful information I can to the police. It, may, it would make zero sense for me to give any more information to random people. Um, but these rumors that are going around were just like crazy. And I, and I didn't have a bad vibe from the guy that people were dragging through the mud. I don't know if he did it or not. I don't know. I'm just saying like, I could speak to the vibe I got from him, which was all people really wanted to know at first anyways. And I thought he was fine. Now the, the news outlet that I talked to, I mean, he really embellished some stuff I said and added his own words to things and kind of changed the verbiage. I wasn't defending anybody. That's one thing he said. Um, I wasn't defending him. I was just saying, People need to stop spreading rumors because that could ruin his life. What if he's innocent? It would ruin his life. The other thing he said is that I noticed him come in with the girls. I didn't notice him come in with the girls. I didn't notice him till I started till I cracked the joke to the frat guys because I thought it was ridiculous that it was like freezing outside and that guy was in a tank top. So I just made a joke because that's how I make friends. I don't know. But that's when the guy chimed in and I noticed him. I, would, I didn't notice him until that moment. Um, when I was at corner club, when I said, ew, some people were like, what? that's such a weird thing to say. Why would I, 
that's what you say when you're standing talking to friends and somebody really drunk, like they smell drunk, they're like bouncing around and they bump into you and like rub up against you. Like that's what you, it's gross. I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but she was really, I mean, you can even see in the grub buzz video. She couldn't even, she walked between us several times and just couldn't even walk straight. That girl was very drunk. She's actually the only one that I thought was really drunk. And she was the only one I noticed at Corner Club because she had bumped into me. Um, another thing that was weird is that the guy who was interviewing me from the Daily Mail or whatever it was, um, he said glass-eyed. And I was like, sure, yeah, like that. I didn't actually even use that word. That was his word. And then as far as the car goes, yeah, there was a car that pulled up. I, I couldn't remember what it was. I couldn't remember if it was black, blue, gray. I couldn't remember. I just remember the car pulled up. Oh, I'm sorry, I had to do this in two. Ooh, so cold. Um, so yeah, so I didn't know what color the car was. It was dark, and I just felt like when I told the guy, I said it was a dark car. I couldn't remember what color it was, and I think when I was at the police station, I couldn't remember what color it was. They asked me to, and um, yeah, so but the daily mail guy was like, no, you need to like, was it blue? Was it black? I was like, I, I can't remember with blue or black. I can't remember. He's like, well, we'll just say dark colored car. And I was like, okay. I was like, I think it was a four door sedan, but this guy got out and was like, Hey, let's go. Let's what are, what's going on. Because the girls were making videos and laughing and they were trying to grab all the food. Every time food was coming out from the grub bus, they were just trying to grab it. <laughs> And, um, they thought it was funny and I mean, it was, I mean, it was a little funny, but they were, they were trying to grab all the food that was coming out. And, um, when I went up and I talked to the guy at the grub bus, I said, did you just give them food? Cause he just said, here you go like that and gave them food. And then they ran off. I thought I actually told the grub bus, I was like, that was really nice of you. He's like, yeah, they just need to, you know, they need to get home. And I was like, yeah, they're, yeah, they were trying to climb into the grub bus. So, I mean, very drunk. And then honestly, as soon as they called my number, that's, I mean, I told the guy, I said, they're leaving, bro. And then because they called my number, I, all I could think about was pasta. I couldn't think about anything else other than just eating macaroni and cheese. And, and that was it. I didn't give any other thoughts. I didn't think anything else about it. Um, yeah. Some people have said that like, I've seen some people say like, oh, I think it's suspicious how much Joe remembers. I, I'm, I'm an adult. Like, as soon as I realized that those were the girls that we saw there, I tried my best to remember everything and recount it from that night because I knew that it would help in the investigation. Some people said, oh, Joe might have been the suspect. Dude, I have cameras in my house. I literally have the time I walked in my house. The girls were still alive at that point. And I have a can of soda that I had in my video. Having in my hands walking walking into my house. So yeah, it wasn't me, I promise. And other people were saying that I was excited about like a claim to fame or something like that. What is wrong with you? That's such a disgusting thing to think. Like, who would be excited about this? I've literally ignored everybody. Like everybody. The only reason I even answered the Daily Mail guy at first. Is because he showed up to my friend's house, like physically showed up to my friend's house, trying to find me or trying to get information about me. Crazy. Ooh, sorry, I put my hood on. It's it's really like it's really cold. Like there's snow outside. Um, but at the end of the day, I mean, I'm I feel like there's people need to stop trying to reach out to me to get statements. There's so many other people that know more about what's going on than I do. I just happened to be getting macaroni and cheese at the same time as them. And other than like those couple minutes there, I can't really speak to anything else. And people need to stop dragging whoever through the mud, especially if you don't live here and you don't know anybody, you don't know what's going on really. Um, like this isn't funny and it's not entertaining. And, um, I believe that Moscow police department is doing a really good job in trying to kind of just do damage control. 
But like, let's be honest, the FBI is like on it. You know, I, I would be surprised if they have a really good idea of who, who it is. They're just waiting for evidence, you know, evidence to just make it concrete, you know, cause one of the worst things that can happen, you guys is if they, if they catch the murderer and they arrest them, bring them in and then they have weak or, or refutable evidence and that person walks. Think about that. You know, so ease up. Don't, don't, don't be jerks to the police. You know, they're literally like, they don't want to give information out because this is like a really tight investigation, but they know things. They know things. I don't understand why they didn't, I will say my one critique. I don't know why they didn't put out right away that a car picked up the girls and was waiting for them in front of the grub bus. It took them way too long to do that. And I, and there was a lot of rumors going around saying that the girls ran away from that guy. They ran across the street. And that's really when I started to like, man, I, I should say something, you know, online. But, you know, I I work in, in media and marketing and I'm a musician and I have a lot of things that I just want to like give the world. And I'm sad that this is kind of how my name got out there. That makes me really sad. Um I'll probably delete these videos as soon as they announce the murder and it's all over. Um, but until then, please just stop. Today I talked to somebody from Dr. Phil. They were wanting me to, to go on Dr. Phil and talk about this. And I'm like, why? I like, I don't think people realize how little I actually know, but like I've said, I've been pretty much ignoring everybody. I'm not going to talk to any more media. Um, there's actually, let me, let me backtrack like that. There's a lady coming to Moscow tomorrow who I'll probably have coffee with, but other than her, that's it. Stop spreading rumors. Sorry, I'm and um, yeah, I just wanted to help. You know, I a part of me too felt guilty because I was laughing. I kind of laughed at the girls, you know, um, watching them be drunk. Because I mean, let's be honest. Anybody that lives here. The whole reason that the grub bus has a Twitch stream is because the people, I kind of, I call them zombies, but just kind of like, because the, they're just people come from all walks throughout the night. Um, a lot of drunk people come there after they've finished their night drinking to get, load up on carbs, eat food. Um, police come there that are working late. They come get their food. They just park right behind the bus. Um, people like me come there who just want pasta in the middle of the night. Um, yeah, it's all walks of life, all people. But it makes for an interesting crowd pretty late. And so they always live stream it. That's the reason they live stream it. So that camera footage that you guys are seeing the the that looks like surveillance, it's not surveillance. It's a live stream for Twitch for the Grub Bus. One thing I did say that um I'm glad that uh was reported truthfully um is that you know I have a I have a little girl and I mean she's a baby, she's like not even two yet. And she's my world. And, you know, there's a dad out there that these girls, that they were the, they're his world, you know, and they're gone. So, and I just felt kind of guilty because instead of helping them when they were drunk, I just, they were entertainment. While I was waiting for food, they were just the entertainment. They were just the drunk people that everybody laughs at, you know. And it's sad, and some people think that's disrespectful. I mean, it's it was what was happening. They were drunk. They were out there drunk like that. And um, one of my toxic traits is that I take on the weight of everything that's going on around me, um, both personally or just even with friends and stuff. And so any of my friends that know me, they reached out to me pretty much right away because they knew that this was going to be eating me up. Um, and it And it has. And I haven't been following what people have been saying until just recently. You know, somebody sent me a TikTok video that had the most ridiculous things on it. And I, I tried to set those straight. And apparently it fueled more Reddit BS and more rumors. I don't understand how people are making this into an entertainment thing. Like, I live here. My friends are scared to walk to their cars. I don't, I'm a big guy. And I'm strong. I don't feel 
super safe going outside alone at night either. I just hope people realize that there's real people that are affected by this stuff, you know, and that. Story throughout the country. Here's a Jewish talk show host who was assassinated, who could carry out such a horrible crime. Police in Denver say they have no firm leads yet regarding the murder of a radio talk show host. The story behind Allen Berg's murder starts with an ideology that took root a thousand miles from Denver in a remote corner of northern Idaho at the Aryan Nation's headquarters. Hail 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 the 20-acre compound was home to Richard Butler, who preached to his followers that white people were under threat from racial minorities, immigrants, and Jews, whom he believed controlled the federal government. We are faced with extinction. We have a right to do whatever we can do to preserve ourselves. Butler soon attracted the attention of FBI agent Wayne Manis. The most significant thing that Richard Butler did is he would have a gathering of people from all these different organizations. They might be Klansmen, they might be skinheads. What do we need? White power! All of these people would come together for the Aryan World Congress. Robert Matthews was one of them. What did you do? Get the heck out of here! Matthews gathered some of the men from the Aryan nations and other groups and formed a secret splinter cell that broke off from the Aryan nations. They pledged their lives to create a whites-only nation. They were called The Order, a name taken from a novel. The Turner Diaries depicted a group of people who made war on the federal government, uh, culminating in the blowing up of the FBI headquarters and the nuclear bombing of the state of Israel. They thought, why should this be fiction? Why don't we take up arms and start a race war? The order wanted to fund the rest of the radical right to create essentially an army of white men. To fund their plan, the order attacked an armored truck on a highway in California in broad daylight in a brazen robbery. They opened the back of the armored truck and helped themselves to $3.6 million. They made one mistake, however. They left behind a handgun. And when they leave, we have the pistol. And that opens up a whole avenue of investigation. That handgun was traced to a member of the order. Scores of FBI agents were shipped onto this rural island in Washington state prepared to do battle. The FBI finally finds out that Matthews is holed up in a cabin on Whidbey Island and that he's heavily armed. Bob refused, refused to surrender. We were met with gunfire. I took about seven rounds just over my head. After a 36-hour standoff, a flare ignited the cabin and Matthews burned to death.